Hey there, internet friend. It's Jason from Drink the Paint Water, and I've got a very strange project today, something a little bit out of my wheelhouse. But my friend, uh, Mark Manchester, contacted me about making a, a fictitious logo for his uh, DCC, Dungeon Crawl Classics, gaming group, uh, affectionately known as Gong Farmers. That's, uh, if, you're, if you're in the know, I-Y-K-Y-K, -Y -Y uh, DCC players are called Gong Farmers, or characters or whatever. Anyway, he wanted a Gong Farmer logo based on kind of what you'd see on a uh, labor unions t-shirt or something. You know, they always have those logos as emblems for the different locals and, and whatnot. My dad was a union electrician, IBEW, and uh, so I'm very familiar with that kind of thing. I knew that it would be a, a big task, but uh, Mark's a cool guy and I wanted to do him a favor. So we're going to knock this out. Uh, my one stipulation being, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you what I've got, and if you like it, great. If you don't, no hard feelings. But um, logo creation isn't really my forte. Uh, in my previous life as a graphic designer, my logos were always like meh, mid, as the kids these days would say. I had a mullet before mullets were cool, Gen Z. Uh, my logos were always mid, so I'm gonna do my best. But I didn't want to get into a, a bunch of back and forth. So without further ado. The uh, software I'll be using is Adobe Illustrator, and uh, the hardware, I'll be using a little mouse with my little mouse and finger, and a uh, wireless Wacom tablet. I believe this is a BT some or something or other. Oh, hope I didn't just turn it off. I don't think I did. So let's get into it. So the uh, I've got the screen capture here going with my Adobe Illustrator window. Ooh, spoiler alert. And here's the proof that Mark sent over to me. And now there's a lot going on in this, so let me explain. So the uh, dinosaur head, the Triceratops, everybody's favorite dinosaur, probably not everybody's, but one of my favorites, the Triceratops is from the Goodman Games, Goodman Games logo, which is the company that puts out Dungeon Crawl Classics. And so they wanted to kind of, you know, do an homage to, uh, to Goodman. Obviously, this isn't for retail sale or anything like that, so they're not uh, worried about copyright infringement. It's more of a, a fan sort of uh, club thing going on. And then uh, they've got this shovel here, and then he wanted Gong Farmer's local number 4615. Not sure what the number means, but I'm sure it's some kind of inside joke with him and his group. And then Adventure Workers, and then uh, Gloria and Aurum, which I never took Latin, but I can probably contextually guess to be gold and glory, uh, which is what many role-playing game adventures are out for, gold and glory, right? And then uh, in the back, there is uh, the silhouette of the great state of Wisconsin, in which both Mark and I currently reside, and <laughs> not together. I've never actually met him, but he seems like a really super guy. All right, so this, and then this uh, the Sanctum logo over uh, over yonder here, to the right uh, is a local gaming store that is very important to Mark and his group. And he wanted to incorporate sort of the, uh, the tentacliness of that logo as just an homage, a little tip of the hat, if you will, to his local gaming uh, brick and mortar store. Woo! Tall order. As some might say, it's 10 pounds of hobby in a five pound dice bag. But you know what? I'm going to, it's a challenge and I'm going to accept that challenge. So without further ado, we need to assemble all of the parts. Now to assemble the parts, uh, I could just make these, you know, from scratch. I could do that, but I happen to have a uh, top tier subscription to a service called Vecteezy, V-E-C-T-E-E-Z-Y, which is like stock art, but it's vectors. So uh, when you're putting together a logo, a lot of times you use vector art. And so Vecteezy lets me go and put in a little search. So I'm going to search for shovel. And lo and behold, I come up with vector artwork of a shovel that I can download and, uh, and use in my projects because I have a subscription. Now this particular shovel, I'd like to just give credit to the uh, original artist of it, was Ivanka Nikitovich. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, and Ivanka must have uploaded this art to the website. I downloaded it. They get a little bit of uh, cash for somebody downloading it, but I thought I would uh, also throw in a little credit. So what I did is I needed a shovel, so I downloaded a shovel. Way, way easier than drawing a shovel, especially when you're just you know doing something for a, a quick little favor. 
Uh, in the similar vein, I needed a silhouette of the great state of Wisconsin, and boom, wouldn't you know, Vecteasy, when I typed in Wisconsin silhouette, gave me lots of choices, and this is the one I chose. And this one uh, was uploaded by an artist named Rus Ruslan my my oh boy, my Borodin. Probably slaughtered that one too. My apologies, Ruslan, if you're watching this, but I wanted to give you credit also. So I have rights to use all this art, but I just wanted to give credit to the artist. All right, so we've got the spade, we've got the uh, silhouette of the state, and that's a big part of what we got going on here. Um, now, what about this? The the six ton Tyrannosaurus? What's this Triceratops in the room? Is what you're asking? Well. It's pretty uh, pretty detailed. Luckily, I was able to go to the Goodman Games website, find a very simplified version of this logo, and then dropped it in here. Ooh, look at that! But it's kind of jagged. It was like a low res version uh, that I could that I could find. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate this logo with our good friend, the Blob Brush. What's that you say? The Blob Brush? Yes, the Blob Brush, which is. I don't know why my, my blacks look very gray. So I'm going to first off select a richer, a richer black to draw this in. And using my Wacom tablet and the little stylus that comes with it, hopefully we're gonna be pretty successful. I have, you know, I haven't done this in a very long time. I used to do it all the time when I would do a, a live stream for my, um, my webcomic, Troll and Friends. But that has been a while yet. So I've got a, a layer here above the dino head. And I'm going to lock the dino head just so that I don't accidentally move it, which is just uh, command two on the on the Adobe Illustrator. This is version uh, 2024. So what the blob brush does, it's a it's a magical thing, is that you use it and you draw it like a pen, and I've got it set up, hopefully. It was working before. Hopefully I've got it set up to where the harder I pr push down with the stylus, the thicker the line gets. You see how that line is nice and ooey and gooey? But one way this differs from just a normal pen brush, it's called the blob brush, is that it creates that as a big solid object, not just a line with a stroke on it. If you're at all familiar with Adobe Illustrator, you know that, that you, know, you have the line and you can adjust the stroke width on it, but it's all about this little central kind of spine that goes through. With a blob brush, it, your entire ink mark gets the uh, the outlines around it. So um, that's kind of a, just a time-saving thing. Having said that now, we're going to trace over. I need to get pretty close, but I don't know about that close. Come on. We're going to, um, it's about as good as I can do, trace over this logo to make it... Uh, Less, less janky, less uh, pixelated. By the way, how do you like this t-shirt? This is the only one in existence. Enjoy paint water. Have you drank your paint water today? I think you should. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this. And once we get started, I'm just going to speed up this process so you don't have to sit here forever and, and watch me trace. See how cool that is though? I'm just following along this line. And then go a little, bit, a little bit lighter. Oops. And it's fine if it makes. Um, I'm going to adjust the settings on the blob brush. And I think kick this down to like four points instead of six. I think the the it was defaulting too big for me. And I don't need that big of a brush because it's it's vector. I can blow it up bigger later if I need to without any loss of uh, of quality. Use big arm motions here to trace that line and then try to get lighter at the end there. And then for these little lines, I'm just going to go shoop, shoop. All right, not bad. And then a little thicker in the middle there. And... All right. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to stop talking, because now we're just going to speed it up for the sake of expediency. I'll see you on the other side of that.
so what I'm doing here is uh, trying to find the paint bucket tool. I haven't used Illustrator to draw to actually illustrate in several years. So bear with me for a second, but I hope you're enjoying the time lapse so far. You know, it, uh, I think it's coming out pretty great. If I do say so myself. All right, let's find that, uh, let's find that paint bucket. Well, this is a little bit embarrassing and feel free to blast me apart in the comments. Uh, I can't find the dang paint bucket tool. You know, they, uh, they change these tools up every once in a while and that might have happened or it might just be operator error. Could be operator error. So I'm just going to fill everything in with the old blob brush. I figured I could save some time, but we're almost done anyway. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to put down my stylus here. And we'll just uh, hide the layer behind it. Zoom out a little bit. I'll hide this other layer too so you can just see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then each of these is a gigantic shape. Pretty awesome, huh? So what I need to do now is take all these separate little uh, shapes, these little islands of, upon themselves, and I'm going to select them all and then Command-G to group them. And then uh, go to Window, Pathfinder. And I'm going to... Oh, did I screw that up? Let's see here. I did something weird. Yeah, it zoomed out when... Uh... I don't know, I, I think that's about right. Because it's just, it's finding edges of, like, between here... Let's see. Between this guy and this guy have separate edges but you can't notice it if you can't see the edges. So what this shape builder is doing is just making those all into one big uh, group, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. It just spooked me for a second. It got real spooky. One thing that you need to realize is that whenever it occurs to you to save a file, like if you're just tooting along, and you're like, I should save a file, do that. That's your, that's your instinct telling you to do it. All right. So. We're going to do offset path. So under object and then path, offset path. And that should give us a. Uh... Hold on. Well, before we do that, I'm going to take this guy and copy him and then paste him, right? So that we've got duplicate heads. Okay, so now that I've got this other guy set over here, just off to the side in case we need him. I'm going to click on this guy and then go to object path and then offset path. And I want that path to be offset um, about 0 0.12. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that gives me a nice little outline. You'll see the method to my madness here in just a second. In fact, I'm going to do it to 0 0.1. I don't need that big of an offset. So we'll do that and that should be a little bit smaller. Hit OK. And then under the Pathfinder uh, palette again, we do that combined thing. And now the easiest way to kind of deal with this, zoom in here, and we're gonna highlight the edges of all these white spaces and hit uh, backspace twice. So the first backspace removes kind of the arc, the second backspace removes the object. So just these couple spots where, uh, where the white's coming through, Oop, not that. I don't want to select the whole object, just these little nuggets. Just need to select the border of it. So I want basically just a, a solid black poof of a shape back here. Alright, let's zoom out and see how we did. Oh, missed one. You hold down the spacebar, it turns it into a little grabby hand. You can drag things around. And then delete and delete. All right. And that, it's pretty cool. It looks like he has like a 70s style lap row. Pretty awesome. All right. Now I want to take this guy and I'm going to do that Pathfinder again. And that just made him into one giant black shape. I thought I saw something over there, but that'll be, that'll be fine. 
So the whole point in doing this is I wanted a white outline around the edge of the triceratops and then also the negative spaces between the black lines to be filled in with white and not with, say, the um, the color of the page or, or anything like that. Like it's the, yeah, anyway, we'll see. So the, the black here, I'm going to use the eyedropper and just pick up the white of the background. And then I select my original head there. And I will do center horizontal or center uh, horizontally and then center vertically. And click off that. And we got a good looking Tyrannosaurus head. I'm going to group that up. And just to show you what I'm talking about, um, I'm going to just make a random rectangle here. We'll pick up a nice bright color, kind of this red. And then I'm just going to uh, send that back, object, arrange, send backwards. And see, that's exactly what I wanted was the. Um, Tyrannosaurus head with a little outline around it so that it'll pop out of the background. So perfect. So we can get rid of this guy here. And so this layer with the with the original uh, dino head on it, I can delete that. Yes. And then we'll pop that guy up. So this dino head, I can make him a little bit smaller now. There's none of these are stroked. I don't know if anyone has ever worked in Illustrator before, but sometimes if you're resizing artwork and it it's just got not the blob brush but the regular pen and made a a line with stroke sometimes when you shrink it down the the stroke say stays the same size and so proportionally it's way wider than it looked before this isn't a problem because none of these are strokes these are all fills so that's great so we got that tyrannosaurus head and then uh, we might as well grab that nice wisconsin map so i can just use this guy to select that green copy it from this uh, board and just drop it over here onto this board. I guess I'm, I'm going to make a new layer here and drop it onto that. Boop. Oh, it's giant. All right, so uh, we just hold down shift when we drag this and that'll drag it proportionally. If you don't hold down shift, you can make it wonky. Whoa, but we don't want to do that. So you hold down shift and you can scale that right on down. And because this again is a fill and nothing's outlined, it didn't get all crazy. Okay, kids, you can see that the method is kind of hitting with this madness here. I'll rotate her a little bit toward Michigan. All right, cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. And I've got that green, um, just, you know, like a, an homage to those the green and those tentacles. But we're going more places with it here in a second. So uh, we got that going on. I'm just going to hide that layer. Tell you, I'm going to lock this guy, which is just Command-2. And I should do the same for Wisconsin, which is Command-2. And then I can hide that layer. Boop. Well, I'll, I'll hide it later when I need to do the, the writing. All right, so uh, this Wisconsin, I, we're pretty much done with it. So I can... Close that out, save it for whatever reason. All right, now this spade here. I think that I want, no, they're all grouped together. I think that I want the fancy one. Get that guy out of there. And this guy, we've given him credit. See you later, Ivanka. All right. So for this, I want it to be just outlined, like kind of like we did the Tyrannosaurus head, or the, I keep saying Tyrannosaurus, the Triceratops head, to where um, it's not filled in, like this uh, wooden handle. I want that to be white areas. So basically, I'm going to use this white arrow, select this highlight. I, I want this highlight to be just pure white also. So if I just select that, and then if I go up to here to select, same fill color it selects everything that's the same color which apparently is nothing all right and we're going to use the eyedropper to fill that in so now that gray thing that i've selected is white here's a funny thing you can do with the eyedropper is i'm going to take it now and that my my white color is selected and if you hold down alt while well, you got these little crosshairs like normally that crosshairs would be what color you're sampling from but I already have a color sampled, so if I hit Alt, it turns, it takes a circle away from that crosshair. You see that? And then I can just drop color 
in to everything I click on. So I kind of want to undo that though, because here, let's, I might do those black. So I'm going to click into that white, click this in white, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So it looks like it's kind of pen drawn. And then what I want to do is if you hold down just command, you can select that guy. And I'm, then I've still got the eyedropper selected and I'm going to fill him with that black by doing the normal thing. And then if I hit alt again, I can drop that black into everything I click on. Right, so now that guy looks like a kind of a cool, just black and white uh, shovel. So I want to select all of these, group them, copy that, and then drop it into our, it's giant. <laughs> copy that into our uh, other composition over here. So I'm going to hold shift and drag to make that smaller. Now the thought that I had, and um, I didn't really run this past Mark because it was just kind of more my artistic vision, was instead of having just a shovel going straight across the back with that Gloria and the Aurum in those weird little chevron shapes, I want to have two shovels. Which I know what you're thinking. I already said it was like 10 pounds of dice in a five pound dice bag, but bear with me. It, um, there could be some method to my madness. So um, if you notice that when I get near the corner there, the uh, pointer turns into a little kind of arrow, double double edged arrow. So my plan here is to use the blade of the shovel as that as that chevron shape. So maybe I need to make this just a little bit bigger. like a so, right? And then I'm going to copy that and then paste it in place. Now, somebody who's more familiar, or I'm very familiar with Adobe Illustrator, but not very well practiced at it because I don't use it very often, um, could just use key, can, key, key, key blue commands, shortcuts, and uh, do this a lot quicker than me. But you know what? It is what it is. All right, so we got uh, we got that bad boy. And then uh, I, so I basically, I copied this guy and then pasted a, an identical one in place. You see that? So that's what I was doing up there. And what I need to do now is if I double click on this, um, or if I hold down this rotate tool, I'll get the reflect tool. Double click on that and it'll make another one. You can choose between horizontal, vertical, or doing it at a different angle, but it did exactly what I wanted it to. So it created an identical one, like kind of skull and crossbones action going on here. I'm going to group these so that I can move them together as a unit. And I can, you know, resize them as a unit. I can rotate them as a unit. So pretty cool. All right. And I accidentally did that on the, um, on the Wisconsin layer. So I think what I'll do is I will cut that, make a new layer, and then paste that in place. So we'll paste in place, shift command V, and boom, there you go. All right, so uh, we're getting there, right? So the next thing I want to do is get that, that circle in the back. Now I need to kind of formulate how this is going to work. My my vision for the tentacles for bringing in that sanctum, uh, the tentacle action was to draw a tentacle up here, right? So maybe the, this top part, this uh, superior up here, turns into a tentacle. Down here, Kenosha, we grab Kenosha and make that a tentacle. And so it's it's 
kind of Wisconsin, but it's but it's also got tentacles. And in that is going to be the the names, the Gone Farmer Local 4612 or whatever that was, and then Adventure Workers up on top in those in those uh tentacles. That's the vision. We'll see. And then um over here the Gloria and the and the aura. So I'm going to lock these. It's command two, lock those shovels. And let's hide all that. All right. So but you can see pretty cool my my vision coming to life here. And I don't know if this tentacle thing is gonna work. You know, we'll we'll see. Let me see where those the spades. Like if I or if I had them coming out of the no, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to mess with the shape of the state. People that know Wisconsin know it'll be Wisconsin. People that don't, whatever. Okay, so we are working on this circle. So if I command R, that'll give me my rulers on the side. Here's a little trick. I pull this guide to where pretty much where it touches the circle. It doesn't have to be exact. And then same for the top where it touches the middle of the circle. All right, so I've got these two guides. And then if I select the ellipse tool and I go to this center of the crosshairs on where these two guides meet, hold down shift, it'll draw me a circle that I can approximate. See, I, I, I think the circle in the original one is just a little bit oblong. It's just a little bit wider than it is tall. Um, and you, can only see that when uh, when you got this circle drawn out. So we got that guy going, and I wanted to give him a stroke color because otherwise we wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, and kind of pull it here to the middle, and then I am going to duplicate that. I'm going to copy him anyway, and then I'm going to lock him. And then I'm going to paste in place, which is shift open apple V, as we all know. Shift, wow, well, open apple. This shows how old I am. Shift command V. Back in the day, in the early days of Apple computers, the keyboards, instead of having like command, they had an Apple logo that was just an outline, and then an Apple logo that was filled in. And one was open apple and one was closed apple. And so instead of alt and command, it was open apple, closed apple. And a lot of the command, so command key was open apple. So in my mind, when I'm doing keyboard shortcuts, I still think open apple C, open apple V, instead of command C, command V. I'm old. We wore an onion on our belt because it was the fashion at the time. All right, so I have pasted in a new circle. And what I'm going to do with that guy is I am going to come over here to the text. Uh, the big T there is the type tool. I'm going to hold that down, and then I'm going to get type on path. Boom. And then we click the, cir the, the uh, circle that we just made. Boom. And you see that? It, that's how you get that curved type across the top. I'm going to do the adventure workers. So uh, let's hunt and peck. And you'd think uh, I would have had a font chosen by now. But oh, so what I'm doing is I, I typed in Adventure Workers and then it's Shift Command or Open Apple, and then um, the little carrot brackets, the sideways that over the comma and the period. Um, the one over the period makes it bigger if you just push, 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 push. There you go, Adventure Workers, and that keeps that on that um, on that path, and we can move it around, right? And we can change the um, the font of it. Let's just see what kind of cool fonts I've got. I only ever keep uh, commercial commercially approved fonts on my in my um, menu in my library, just so I don't accidentally use something that um, you know that you can't use that that you that's that's not available for um, commercial use. Boy, I sure like that Adumu. This one kind of yeah, they they might like this one. So I'm gonna try that one for now, and then on this one you can you know pull that to make it bigger. 
you know, just hold down shift and pull that corner to make it bigger. You can rotate it, or you can do, if you zoom in here, uh, I'm gonna change this font because that real thin wispy font isn't gonna look great if I'm reversing it out of the tentacle. So let's pick a different font. I like that, Adumu. So let's do that, that's nice and bold. Okay, so um, I'm zoomed in here, and if you can see, way over here, we've got these two lines with boxes. Now, um, this guy, oops, if, when, I, when I hover over it, you can see that the white arrow turns black, and then underneath it, there's a little um, line with an arrow. I'm not sure if, how well you can see that. But that means that I'm going to adjust where the um, where the line begins. So I click on that, and I can pull this back. Oh, I can't pull it back past that one. Okay, hold on. So first off, I have to pull this guy back a little bit. This was this was when the type was going all the way around when it was a smaller font. Um, this was where it can end. So I just need to give myself some room. Doesn't this is arbitrary right now because I'm not going to use that. But this guy, I want to pull him back to where this A begins. We can zoom out to see kind of where, where we're lining up. So I'll pull down another guide and just see how these... Yeah, they're not too bad. I, th I think that I want to move it back just a little bit from whence it came. Because the S was a little... All right, so the A right now is just descending a little bit under that guide, and the S also a little bit. That's close enough for government work. All right, so we've got adventure workers. Where's my layers palette? I'm going to hide that back one so you can just kind of see how that goes. Um, you know, so we can, we can move that around and adjust it to fit everything else. And then we are going to do pretty much the same thing again. So we got to show that back layer. And then I had copied that big circle and pasted it in place to make that, that curved arch. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I think I'm going to make myself another layer here, though. And so I shift command V to paste in place, and that gives us another circle. When you do that type on a path tool, it erases the stroke of the circle so that you don't have like a circle, a solid printed circle, and then the words over it. Um, it gets rid of that and makes the circle invisible, so you just see the words. So that's what we're going to do um, here, uh, here on the bottom. So I've got that circle. I'm going to hit the. Yeah, this is on its own layer. Oh no, that's the wrong. That's the wrong thing. All right, so type, type on path tool, boom, and then I'm gonna write Gong Farmers local number four six one five. Now you're saying, Jaybird, you're crazy. Look at that. It's it's all screwed up. Well, don't don't worry, my friend. Don't you worry. Now. Get this little doohickey out of the way. Come on, get out of there. So we've got this other circle selected here, this guy. And we need to get that type to follow how this one flows. <clears throat> the way we're going to do that is we take this other little bar over here and we drag that down inside so now see that things rotating around the inside of the circle all right so we've got that guy and what i'm going to do is uh kind of expand this out a little bit because that got really <laughs> i got really jammed up there we might have to pick a different font after all All right, so let's just, for the sake of argument, change that to a less beefy font.
All right, so that guy might be okay. It's just, boy, it's just so many words. And if I pull that up, I'm kind of pulling these circles out of shape a bit, but that's okay. It's just such a big word. So I'm going to have to make the uh, font smaller, which again is just shift command and then the bracket over the comma. And we can rotate that guy. We can either um, pull those start and stop. Guys, like we had before. And eyeball it. Get them over there. But now I've kind of messed up the shape of that circle. So I'm just going to pull these out so that they're kind of matching what we had before. So I can either do that, or since this is on a circle by itself, I can just rotate the entire thing. If you want to get lazy about it. All right, and that one is workers. Okay. And then, um, obviously, for that organized in 2024, we're going to make yet another one. I'm going to lock this guy, Command-2. We'll make yet another layer, and then we're going to shift command V to drop another circle in place on top of the other ones. And let me um, hide these other circles so I don't get myself confused. We select the type on path, just click anywhere on that path, and we get that guy. And we are changing this to organized January. 20, 20, 24. I got fat fingered that one. All right. And then uh, when we select that circle again, we're going to get this tall boy over here. We just drag him toward the center. There you go. Boom. Like a so. So then when I drop in those other rings of text and let's just take that guy out of the equation so we've got that original circle in there which we can pretty much get rid of i think um is that this guy oh yeah oh those okay those are on the same path all right so i'm going to object the the one bad thing about illustrator is that if you try to unlock an object you have to unlock all the objects and then go back and relock the objects that you want locked instead of just being able to like pick which um which object you want to unlock so that's silly so basically i just want to i want to get to just that circle this guy here and delete him we don't need him anymore All right so we pull him back to the middle and then how are we looking compared to everything else so let's get our wisconsin in there and our shovels, and our triceratops, and we want these um, lines of text to be above the artwork, so I'm just in the layers palette here, I'm pulling them up to where I want them to be. And then I can hide, let me hide that bottom layer just to get a cleaner look at what's going on here. All right, that Gong Farmers is still huge. So I'm going to take this guy, and just the shift command left bracket down so he's smaller. And there's really nothing we can do about that just because it's such a long word, you know? Oops. Pulling the wrong one there. All right, so this guy's where it started. And then that organized, I want to make that smaller also. Okay, and if we make that centered, I'm just going to do some cleanup work here. I should have made the all these centered to begin with. That's what's screwing me up. So, that big guy, this is the end bracket. So I'm going to shift. No, that looks bad. <laughs> oh, you get to see how the sausage is made here, kids. All right, we're rotating this guy around. 
And then organize, we're rotating him around. And it doesn't matter that they don't line up, we'll fix that. By just dragging this guy over. And we can change the shape of the ovals and everything too. This adventure workers, I wanted to make him smaller. And then we can just rotate also. Alright, so this guy. I can either make him. I'm messing up the circle here. Such a long word, such a long phrase. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete that one. Take this guy, duplicate him by holding down the alt. And then I'm just gonna type in the words. What, what gong farmer was that? 46 something. Forty-six fifteen. Alright, so we're taking this and we're saying Gong Farmer's local. I'm gonna say forty-six fifteen. I'm gonna get rid of that N that number in there, the NO, um, just to make this phrase a little bit smaller. So those guys are on the same line there. But when you do it kind of outside of the scope, it gets a little weird. So we're just going to wonky it up here a little bit. Kind of what we had going before, but less offensive, I think, right now. All right. And we'll hide that bottom layer. Okay. I like everything I'm seeing so far. So let's take all of these guys. And center them. So I'm going up here to align. I just I dragged my cursor and selected all the objects. I'm going to line them uh, horizontally. Oh, that's terrible. And vertically. That's horrible. It's even worse. All right. Let's forget that I said anything about any of that. We're just going to eyeball it. The old fashioned eyeball. What I can do though is select these two. And just make them larger. I'm pulling down. I'm holding down shift as I drag that, so that those words are actually larger now. Okay. And then we needed the words Aram and uh, Gloria. So I will take a regular type tool. Boom. And I'll write those. But I want to do it in this. I like that type better. I don't know. Is that silly? We'll, we'll find out here in a second. And then if I hold down Alt and click and drag this, it duplicates it. And we'll do Aurum on that. Okay. And then when we show these guys again, this Aurum can go here. And Gloria can go here. And I want these guys to be aligned on their bottoms so that the, both their baselines are lined up with each other. And that is this button right here. Cool. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these fine folks right here so that I can move them as a unit. I'm going to use this pen tool at an anchor point, which is roughly at the top there of where I see those other, um, where I see this line, if I extended it out, I think it would be right there. Then I'm gonna select this guy and delete him. Then I'm gonna select this guy and delete him. And then we've got this guy just floating out up here, I'm gonna delete him. So that we've got, we got rid of that spike of highlight 
that was interfering with the word Gloria. All right, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing over here on this side. Just on the pen tool, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to add an anchor point. I think about where that line would extend. Same over here. And then with the white tool, the direct select tool, delete that point, delete this point, delete that point, and then with changing back to the regular pen tool, connect these two points so that I don't have an open path there. It's just good, uh, good housekeeping. Okay, so we've got those two shovels there, Gloria and Aram. I'm going to change their color to white. And then get them up onto those shovels. You can kind of see the method to my madness here, right? I just wonder if they would look better in that other typeface. So I'm going to select this guy. <clears throat> and I'll select this typeface. And then change that to white. And move them in. So I don't know if I like that. Um, this guy here, I will select with the eyedropper tool, just select him, and then move him in over to here. And let's hide that base layer again. And we haven't saved in a while, so let's do that right now. Command S. Now I'm trying to envision these tentacles. So I, I wonder if I'm going to go back on my idea of making them on the state of Wisconsin. I'm going to make this guy smaller and just put him up inside here. Could even make this guy smaller. And I wonder if this Wisconsin was the same color as everything else, how that would stand out. Because I want to effectively make this one color so that if they're printing them on a t-shirt or whatever, they don't have to pay for printing a whole bunch of different colors. Print Just printing a silk screen one color onto a, um, a t-shirt or a koozie or whatever uh, is pretty cost effective. This is looking pretty good to me. Um, this uh, This is a different black here. So I'm just going to change it to the same color as everything else, and then we can adjust it all later. But right now, just visually, I want um, I want all the blacks to be same. Actually, you know what? I'm good. No, I'm going to do that the other way around. So I'm going to select this kind of grayish black that I've got going here, and like we did before, go select same fill color, and it should select all that stuff. And then with my eyedropper, I'm just going to come in here and select this nice dark black. Boom. Yeah, that's cool. And then I just I wonder how these would look rotated a little bit. So that they rotated to match the angle of the dangle, the angle of the spade. Yeah, I like that better. So this guy, I'm going to rotate him as well. And I am just kind of eyeballing this. I should do it, you know, by actual math. But that's okay. Sometimes eyeballing things is actually better than... <laughs> Let's build them up. So this Adventure Workers up here, I love that font, but I think that I need to go with one that matches everything else. So I'm just going to select this guy. Boom. Come on. Not what I wanted at all. You know that. So I'll select this guy. And then the color of this guy. And then we can just drag these handles to... Come on. Drag these handles to make it work. All right, 
And now for the tentacles. And this is where I you know, might go off the rails. But I'm just going to draw them maybe coming out of the handle of this spade and the blade of this spade. Might look like one of those little spacers that you put in the big hole in the middle of a 45 record. Hopefully it won't look like a, a Schwerstrika. <laughs> that was, that's, that's considered bad design. You, you try to avoid that. All right, so I'm going to make just a brand new layer. Um, I should generally, when I'm working in layers in Photoshop or in design or um, not, not in design, but in Procreate, I will name my layers so I don't have to go through here and try to t look at those little tiny uh, previews and try to figure out or try to remember what's what. Um, I didn't do that because I figured, ah, I'll be able to tell that's the Triceratops and that's the shovel and that's the Wisconsin. Um, but, it, you know, it's it's surprisingly tight. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I made a brand new layer. Where are you? Layer number seven. Right? Nobody's on layer seven. Okay, good. Um, and we're going to go over here to our paintbrush tool. What do, what do you think? What's the best? guy for this you know what i'm gonna do this right so i'm gonna save this and then export it over to my ipad and we'll catch you there for just a second okay through the uh, movie magic of video editing we've landed here inside my ipad so i've got an ipad uh an ipad pro in the 12.9 inch i think or whatever the thing is in my sketchboard pro which is like a big old board that the ipad plugs into kind of like uh it just nestles in there and it's kind of like a drawing board that you would see in uh in college or in art school it just makes it easier to draw on the on the ipad and i thought we'd come over here to draw in those tentacles that i was talking about earlier i brainstormed a little bit and actually my lovely wife came in uh actually while i was getting this all set up and had another suggestion too so we'll kind of go with my my idea first and if it looks like crap we'll try her idea and uh, we'll land on something cool so we uh, transferred over here to my ipad and a um, piece of software called adobe fresco which i'm not terribly familiar with but i think is going to be perfect for the job that we do if you are a regular viewer of this channel you know that uh on every monday night i at least try to live stream in adobe fresco and a project that i'm working on uh if you haven't seen that come back and check it after this video uh, or if you could just you know if you subscribe smash that like button hit notifications you'll know when i'm when i'm going live but anyway, we're over here into adobe fresco what i need to do is start a new a new project that is in inches we're going to say 10 inches wide about eight inches tall, which is what the dimensions. And we're gonna do this 300. Um, we're gonna, which is the dimensions of what I was working in in Adobe Illustrator. So now we've got this brand new uh, canvas here. Come over here to the images, photos. It takes you to my, <laughs> to my wonderful photo library to choose from. There's a lot of great choices in here, but I think I'm gonna take this guy. Ooh, and he is pretty small, so let's blow him up just by dragging the corners. I'll zoom out just so I can get a full view of the, the whole canvas. All right, so this is basically uh, in Illustrator on the other uh, program. I exported this as a JPEG, used AirDrop to get it from my Macintosh to my iPad, and then pulled that up out of the uh, pulled the JPEG up out of my photo gallery my photo library so that we have uh, this to work on here. So I'm going to have that on layer that is perfect, hit done here. And then I am going to add a layer above that guy. I'm going to lock this layer, I believe. Let's click on that. Gotta be a lock layer, yeah. All right, and then I'm just using a pencil. I'm going to use some kind of weird color, like kind of magenta. And what I'm going to, my thought is here, you, you can kind of play with it. 
is that the tentacle will kind of go this way and like swoop up and that adventure workers can be on a path inside that tentacle. Now that's a weak ass tentacle, so let me let me draw it like I mean it. I want it to use the shape better. If I'm not worried about keeping that word inside of it. Right? Although it can't be too crazy. So if I, I just double tap to undo, that's kind of the beautiful thing about digital art is that you can use layers and you can undo a million times. All right. And then I thought the other one could come down here and kind of mirror that coming off the this blade of that other spade. So I think that looks okay. Um, I had actually thought just looking at the um, at what I've got going for the logo, I might get rid of this organized January 2024 and just in this area here, put like since 2024. That kind of takes away having to fit two lines of text into this bottom uh, this bottom tentacle. And also it doesn't have these two lines of type next to each other so you can really read if one's not if they're not quite centered if they're not quite the same angle or, or uh, shape or whatever um, just kind of idiot proofing it so i th think i'll either do it like there or i can really make it smaller and just do like since 2024 underneath there just in that hollow but but not trying to match that same curve of the circle so this is my idea of of how i want this to uh, to work out we've got these guys just kind of figured in where we need them i'm going to go back over to illustrator oh boy i'm going to go back over to illustrator and then trace vector shapes over these uh over these sketches in a smoother manner than the uh the stylus will allow so bear with me for a second while we hop back over to the other software um, what I'm what I'm going to do is take this, export it as a JPEG, airdrop it again, but this time from the iPad to the Macintosh, or to my MacBook, and then open that up, drop it in to our uh, composition, and then trace over these purple lines. Ooh, it's a lot of work, but uh, it's a fun challenge. All right, everybody, here we are back in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm still Jason from Drink the Paint Water. All right, I have saved that i have exported that uh, adobe fresco file as a png actually which is a raster file and dropped it over here into my macbook and i am going to place that i'm going to drop it above uh kind of the the bottom layer that we have been working on so make a new layer there so place and it's going to ask me for the uh, file that i want to place and that was Manchester from iPad. <laughs> Click over here, and that places the image. So I pull that back into here, and you can see it kind of replaces what we had been working on. I'm going to uh, center this to the to the canvas, so we got that kind of going. I'm going to lock that guy so it can't move him around. And then for this, our good friend, the pen tool. <clears throat> I'm just going to click here. Now, this is the way I used to make all of my vector art uh, before Illustrator got very fancy. Uh, let me, I got to change that from fill to stroke so that it doesn't fill up every time. So basically, I'm, I'm clicking the mouse button with the pen tool and then holding it down to kind of make a curve. And then I have to come back over here and click that little handle again to kind of tell it that I'm freestyling. One's gone weird, but we're just going to go with it. Okay. I guess I had been hitting it, but it was just looked weird to me. And then, I'm yeah, so I'm just kind of tracing that shape that I drew in Adobe Fresco. Point by point. 
which is, you know, kind of a time-consuming way, but also a little bit of a zen way to do things. I never minded doing it. I made some very, very intricate artwork in my time, just using the pen tool point by point. All right, and I can click to this guy, and if I click and hold down, I can make that curve happen. Kind of inconvenient that I couldn't see the handle, but that's fine. And then, uh, like I said about good housekeeping, I just hate to have uh, have loose ends. Now that, yeah, there you go. So I will connect. It's hard to see because I'm using a black stroke and against the black there. But there you go. So I've got that guy going. If I've got the, just this direct select, I can select on there, and sometimes it'll give me a like a little icon, like this little dot here. If I pull on that, it'll kind of round out the corner for me. If it sometimes when you when you join two paths like that, it makes it a little peak. It's not a very smooth uh, transition. These are all pretty good, but this tool allows you to kind of smooth that out. So whenever I can, I let the tool work for me. Yeah, but we did actually we did pretty well. All right, so now we've got that guy. We can increase the size of the stroke if we like. Right? Or what I was thinking is if we make the stroke filled in, we can run the uh, we can run the words in reverse on top of it. So I don't hate it. Um, let me, let's undo that just so I can kind of see what I'm working with. And then what I want to do is draw a path inside there that pretty much follows the uh, shape. Of what we're working with. Come on. All right. Gotta wait for that little purple line. There you go. That's when you know you hit it. It follows the shape of the tentacle. Right? And then we're going to go to the type tool, type on path. And we don't wanna we wanna type on this path. So let's select that path. All these paths underneath us are activating, so I'm gonna lock them. It's like I want to shift. I want to type on this path, jerk. There you go. And we are doing adventure workers. So A D E E N T U R N workers. Do I have an extra S on there? We don't need that. And then just like when we had it in the circle, we can use this little handle to pull it back. And so if I hide layer. Right, so adventure workers. That S is a little bit weird. So what we can do is come in here and just change the shape of this path. Come on, change the shape of this path so that the S doesn't try to ride up like that. But overall, not too bad. Let's move this up. I don't like how the K and the E touch serifs there, but we can we can work on that. Uh, artificially kind of moving those letters out. I'm not crazy about how this looks, but um, but let's just stick with it here for the for shits and giggles. And I can, you know, shrink it down. I can kind of move it down, rotate it if I want to. And I could always resize the, you know, kind of reshape the tentacle too if I wanted. I don't know why it's got so many points right there. I guess because I softened it up. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Okay. 
Why are you get out quickly? Come on. Illustrator is definitely a, a finicky little monster. There we go. That's a little bit better. But you can see how, like, right here, this is like a little jagged point. So if I pull this guy out, it's going to soften that. But then it's also going to add points on the end. So adventure workers. Now let's take that and make it white. And then we'll take that tentacle and make it filled with black. I don't hate it. Um, I think maybe if this font were smaller, it wouldn't ride as uh, close to the you know close to the edge. If I'm having trouble with those uh, serifs touching each other too much, I can always um, change that change that font back to what I wanted it to be originally that that other font Come on. let me select that guy I want you just see how finicky this thing all right I mean, in one hand, it's good because you can really um, adjust things. But on the other, it's kind of a pain in the boot tops. All right, so we've got adventure workers. And like I said, I'm going to get rid of this organized. I don't like it. And then um, let's see how that other font looks. It is a Dumu. Yeah, see, that almost looks like... Uh, like a, a Soviet banner. Adventure workers of the you of the world unite. Ah, I don't hate it. I like it better than that other Finley crap. And I can make it bigger. Get this dang thing out of my way. All right. But the the downside to running type on a path like that is that it gets all funky. Where the letters run together so what we need to do is go in here to this e and we're just gonna adjust that spacing kick the r out a little bit and then we'll go to the r and we'll adjust that spacing kick the s out so that none of the letters are exactly touching and i still think that This could go better here. Like if that came down, if this came down. Get the heck out of my way. And we're changing the rotation on that so that S isn't just kind of sky high. And then having done that, I can come back and kind of kill that spacing on the R a little bit. Bring that S in a little, a little smoochier. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I have not ever have been or never claimed to be the world's best uh, logo designer. But I'm having fun with this, and I hope you are too. All right, adventure workers. So what I was thinking here is that for the tentacles, I could use an ellipse with a white fill and a black stroke. All right, so we... Just kind of do like that, and we make the stroke bigger. So we can uh, kind of do this, you know? And if you hold down Alt, you can just replicate these things, resize them. Now, um, I should demonstrate <clears throat> what I showed before, is that if you replicate something sometimes and and squeeze it down not the sometimes the stroke scales with it and sometimes it doesn't so you have to be careful for that so this, this one actually looks pretty good
I'm just going to do a variety of sucker sizes here. But we don't want it to seem like it's part of the letters or anything, you know? All right, we'll drag one over here to the beginning. Rotate it. And scale them. And I think I want the, um, I definitely want the letters to, to go over any that might uh, dip down like that one does. So at the end, when I'm done making all the suckers, I will uh, make sure to bring these letters to the very front. I don't think we need to go too crazy with it, but we, I just wanted it to be an homage to that, um, to that game store that that Mark and his buddies play at. We just kind of change the size, change the shape a little bit of these guys. Again, I'm holding down Alt and just dragging to um, duplicate these guys. And I think I kind of want that to be in the same direction as that guy. A happy little sucker, like Bob Ross. Okay, so I think that's good without getting uh, over overwhelmed. And then these guys I'm going to uh, object, a range, bring to front, so, if, so that E popped out over the top of that other thing. I don't know. I, I kind of liked it back. Okay, so I ended that. I stand corrected. So um, I might try to just duplicate this entire tentacle. Oops, come on. I don't want that circle. Duplicate that tentacle and these suckers. And then copy and paste it and reflect it. for that bottom tentacle. So now I'm going over here to if I hold down on rotate, I'll get the reflect tool, double click on that, and I want it to be a horizontal reflection. And hit OK. And then we go reflect again, and we want it to be a vertical reflection. OK. And then I'm going to group that, because I can't remember if I grouped it or not. And we've got that guy there. And we can rotate him a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it, it's not going to quite work because of the bottom, the shape of the bottom of the state. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can kind of you can tell it's Wisconsin. If you if you know it's Wisconsin, you're going to know it's Wisconsin. If you don't know it's Wisconsin, you're not going to. I say well, let's keep this one off to the side, and then I can. Um, I'll try to draw. Uh, yeah, I'll try to dip, 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 draw another one based on this guy here. So what I'm doing is I'm making a new layer. <laughs> Learning from my mistakes, friends. And then doing that same old trick where I draw, draw a tentacle. But I am going to change the color of this. All right, so I'm just trying to click on that green dot, and I'm doing it. Why are you not? All right, well, I'm just going to go with this then. Click there. Make this guy like that. Click there. All right, what this is doing, though, is also... Why? Why do you do that? Um, it's also filling with white, and I don't necessarily want it to do that. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. 
I'll just, I'll change it in a second. Now, it seems to me like maybe I'd been trying to do it in an old, outdated way, and that's, it was just trying to save me from myself. All right, and I'm going to take the direct select tool of it. Select just that point and pull him down to be inside that shuffle. All right. And then we lock that guy and then try to draw a shape that fits in here. Again, I don't want to get too crazy with it because we saw what happened last time where that S was going like sky high. Let's just, you know, kind of fit the general shape of this without getting too curly Q. And we want that to be no fill. No chill. All right. And then we are tapping on a path. Selecting this path. And that was Gong Farmer's Wizzle. All right, so that ran off the end there, but what we can do is just pull this guy back. I guess if we make this left justified, we'll go right there. There you go. And then this is just not long enough. I need to select that point or just make this type smaller. There you go. Well, it definitely looks less janky than the top one, but it also looks less organic. But what we can do is pull this up. It's not bad. And then we can rotate that guy a little bit, I think. And then change it to white. And then change the tentacle. I locked the tentacle, so let's unlock the tentacle. And we're going to change that guy to the same black as the other tentacle. Can you see where I'm going with this? Now, I don't know if they're going to think that it's trying to form an S with these two. But uh, that's their problem. <laughs> All right, let's bring this, this tentacle down here. And what I'm going to do is just going to cannibalize these suckers off of there. So. We'll do that, we'll ungroup it. It says shift command G, ungroup that. All right, so we're going to ungroup that now that we're on the correct layer. Delete that guy. And now these should actually already be in the front since I um, pasted them onto the new layer. Things you paste obviously come to the front. You know, I'm feeling spicy. I might do both my version and my wife's version. And uh, we'll see, like, Mark can pick what he likes best. Or, um, you know, if you guys want to comment which one you think is cooler. Don't have to worry about hurting my feelings. If you think hers is a better idea, that's cool. She's a very smart lady. Now, I know the tentacle on the top has the suckers pointed out, and the tentacle on the bottom has the suckers pointed in. But, you know, I'm willing to live with that. Yeah, I think that looks okay. And then we need to do the, um, I was thinking instead of since 2024, I might do um, established 2024. And when I lost my bottom thing there, uh, I lost my Gloria Aurum. So I'm going to do copy that. Actually, I'm just going to X that. All right. And then I can hide that guy. And then I'm going to add a new layer and paste those guys in place. Oops. All right. 
So we've got adventure workers, and let's hide that uh, bottom kind of comp uh, composite. I think that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to save it. And then here's a, a cool trick. Like we've got this guy over here is the artboard, and I want to duplicate this artboard. So I click on the artboard. Boom. Okay, cool. Let's uh, get rid of that guy. We don't need him anymore. All right, so we need to clean this joint up a little bit. So on this first one, we're going to, uh, if we go here to the artboard tool again, it just says artboard one and artboard one copy. Uh, up here, you can name it. So I'm going to say Jason's version. And over here, my lovely wife, Janelle, we're going to name this one Janelle's version. So on uh, Jason's version, I'm going to go through and just get rid of everything I don't need. I need to hide or just delete that background. There we go. And whatever this circle here is. Boom. All right, so that is mine. I'm going to save and have a delicious treat. And then... I don't I haven't forgotten about the uh, since 2024 or but I, I thought that I would do established 2024. Um, but before I got too far ahead of myself, I just wanted to get that stuff over there. All right, so now I just do a regular <clears throat> type tool. And I was thinking EST 2024 instead of since I think established sounds a little nicer. And we're going to do this. We're going to make sure that the character spacing isn't crazy. You see right now it's at 50. I thought it looked a little bit wide. Um, but I also wanted maybe a little bit more. So, like between that two and the zero was kind of tight. Um, but I don't like how far out the, the period is. So, I'm going to take the T character and then suck that guy in. Like, pull him under the, the hat of the T. Yeah, that's right. That's the technical term for it. And then if I make this white... I can drop it over that corner. Hold shift to scale it proportionally. So that's pretty good. Or, um, or I could do since and do a line break. Let's see how I like that better. Yeah, I like that better. Um, Unless this was like a stab. And then we um, kill the letting on that. Letting is the line spacing. No, I think I think sense is better in this case. And I'm going to kick the 2024 up just the skosh so that those are um, pretty much the same size. And I'm going to kick the letting up just a tick. There you go. Now it's called letting because in the olden days when they had old newspapers on hand, with handset letter type, they would have to build all the paragraphs of a newspaper with individual letters that were on pieces of lead. right? And then in between each line, they would just have these blank slabs of lead but they would slide in there. And so if, you know, they were so thick. So if you wanted extra, you had to slide another slab of lead in there to make more space between the paragraphs or between the lines. And that's why it's called leading because you would put pieces of lead inside there. Hey, you're learning something here. All right. Well, I think mine looks awesome and hopefully Mark's going to be wild about it. The only uh, reservation I have about it is that it looks like an S and it's not supposed to be an S for any reason, but um, you know, tentacles are like that. So Janelle's idea was to get rid of my tentacles. All right, and we can actually get rid of this guy. And I'm going to get rid of this guy too, right? Because we're far enough along that we don't need those things. So let me just make sure I didn't mess anything up on my version. Man, I really like mine. It's going to be tough, tough to beat. But let me get rid of this little... Come on now. A little fruit loop there, the little uh, spaghetti -o. All right, so now Janelle's idea 
was to go into the drawing of the Triceratops, which I'm going to kind of do the same thing I had before by adding points. Well, I can I select that. All right. So if I, I guess I don't have to add points. There's a bunch. So I'm going to just select this path and delete it, and then select this and then select that. Select this path and whoop, no. Click that path and delete it, and that makes a break there. So then I can take my pen tool and connect these two points together, right? And then take this guy and get rid of that whole line. Nope. Why do you do that? I guess maybe because it's grouped together. So we're just going to do that. Okay. Maybe you can see where this is going. All right. And why did that break? I guess that's just how it was. All right. Well, I want this guy to be more rounded. There's a lot of, a lot of points. Just to make it a little bit more interesting. And then she thought if we've made the um, horns into tentacles, maybe that would be a thing. So I'm going to make a new layer. <laughs> oh, I should have been naming these layers. This is the worst. Please don't uh, emulate this. All right, I'm going to do that. And then this, we got to switch it to that nice rich black. And then I guess I need to zoom in more because this is going to take a little bit more finesse. So like I mentioned, I'm um, just kind of doing this as a favor for Mark. He had um, contacted me to hire me to do this. Oops. But um, I, it's just, it's not, it's not what I want to do. Like I, I, my logo making days are behind me. And um, like I've mentioned many times, I'm, I'm not all that hot at it. But the more I sat with it, the more I thought, okay, wait, hold on, I've got an idea that, you know, I've illustrated there with the, the two shovels and then having the words inside the shovel blades. Uh, I was playing around with my head. I'm like, all right, well, if it's giving me some vision, maybe that might not be so bad. But I wouldn't feel right charging for it um, just because, you know, maybe it's not going to be great. And um, also you've seen now that it takes a long, long time to do. And I didn't feel comfortable... To be honest, I didn't feel comfortable charging what it was worth. Uh, because just for my own, uh, I guess, like my own bit of um, imposter syndrome, thinking, I, you know, I'm going to be overcharging him because this is going to be horrible, <laughs> right? So uh, for, that, I, I, for that reason, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to... I'm good. I'm just going to comp it. My um, a designer that I really admire named uh, Aaron Draplin, the guy who designed this hat, actually, which is autographed by him. Hell yeah. Uh, he is a world famous designer. He's, he's one of them. He's like, as this as graphic designers go, he's a rock star. And he makes it a point to go through Craigslist and find people that are putting an ad in for like, I need someone to help me with graphic design. Uh, you know, I can pay a hundred dollars or something and, and taking those jobs and doing them for free. And the people probably don't even know that they're, <laughs> that they're getting a, a world famous world-class designer designing their thing for free. But uh, his theory behind it is that he can improve 
one person's life just with the click of his mouse finger. Like uh, he realizes the the privilege that he and um, all designers have in the magic that we can work with the with the skills that we have. And you know, and to be fair to all of us, we a lot of, some of us went to school, some of us didn't go to school, but we've worked at this. We've had a lot of experience and put a lot of time into it and sorry i can't multiply that and put a lot of time into it so it's not like privilege is a weird word to say but we've, we've gotten to this point where we can use man our little our little mouse fingers to make somebody's life better to make somebody happy to to do whatever and i know that this isn't really a probably a commercial thing that mark's doing you know his, him and his buddies just want some silly shirts probably to wear to conventions hopefully this is done in time for gary con i, I imagine that they're going there and uh you know if i can help with that cool man it's 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 worth more than money i would have felt bad taking money for it um which maybe there's people out there saying you're an idiot or maybe people saying that i'm literally taking food out of other designers mouths like if i didn't do it he would have had to go find somebody to do it for pay and that person's now losing out whatever um i have my reasons and i feel good about it and hopefully mark feels good about it one uh one stipulation though and, and probably one of my least favorite things about working in an ad agency uh back in my in my prior existence was the all the back and forth like um you know, you, you work on something and they'd say, okay, cool. And not saying Mark would do this at all. I've, I've never worked with Mark, so I don't know. But just in, in general, I wanted to avoid um, too much back and forth with changes. You know, oh, this is cool, but can you nudge that? Or, you know, I showed this to my uncle and <laughs> he used to work at the Journal Sentinel newspaper. He, he knows about graphic design and he thought you should do this. Um, again, not saying that that would ever happen, but I was um, doing this for free with the condition that there, there is no back and forth. <laughs> what you get is what you get. And uh, he was cool with that. And if he gets it and doesn't like it, absolutely no sweat at all. Like none whatsoever. Like, no hard feelings, no nothing. Um, he'll just have to <laughs> pay somebody or, uh, you know, or go without. But, uh, you know, I feel, I feel good about my decision to, to help him out. Seems like a cool guy. In fact, uh, he just has a, a Kickstarter. Just started. I believe it's Wayward Press Studios is the name of his uh, company. So maybe check that out. So here I just copied and pasted those uh, suckers from the other one. I'm just going to move them around a little bit instead of like redrawing a whole bunch of uh, ovals. We can just repurpose the ones we have. Now, you might have seen me while I was talking about that whole Aaron Draplin thing. Um, going in and, and adjusting the size of the strokes. Like, see this guy here? You can tell he's got a real thin uh, outline around the circle. And here it's 0.4668. So I was bumping those up to like 0.75. It jumps up to 1. I kick it back to 0.75. And then I can tell the stroke, instead of going along the center line of the shape, to go to the outside. And that makes it a little less um, claustrophobic. Like this guy here, too. You can tell he's small. He's got 0.5. I'll kick him up to 0.7. Which means one of these guys probably does, too, because those guys were all copied and pasted. All right. So this is Janelle's idea. Was putting the suckers on the, on the horns. You know, I'm just, I'm feeling like maybe it doesn't read as well. And maybe I need to just make them all one point stroke. Make them bolder, you know? So tell me in the comments, what do you, what do you think about doing free work i know a lot of designers and artists say no you know uh people die from exposure and yeah that's that's valid it's very fair but also you know why not 
use your skills to help somebody out. You know, if, especially if it's your own idea. All right, so I feel like we need to reinsert a circle element in the back there. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go hog wild with it and draw a circle. It's got a stroke I don't want to fill on it, and then we'll bump that stroke up, send it to the back. Although I should have probably done it on its own layer. And then we can kind of stretch it out, which is, you know, kind of how the original one started, was that it was a little bit not quite, not quite circular. All right, I don't like how it cuts over the top of those shovels. But I think that it is because it's on a layer above those shovels. So I need to take this guy all the way back. Can I do that? Yeah. No, because then those suckers are on the same. All right, let's undo that. Let's select this guy. Let's cut him out of there. And then we're going to go all the way here to the bottom. Add a new layer. Way down to the bottom. And paste him in there. There we go. Huh. We just need to work on that. Okay, and then this gong farmer's local. That one just needs to go away. And then let's unlock all. And this gong farmer's local needs to come up here, and we're just gonna. Caress it a little bit. That circle's not centered. Right here. I don't like how Wisconsin's sticking off the edge of that. Oh, my design's way better. Sorry, you know. All right, and then I will <clears throat> do established. 2024 in this other font. Shrink that down. And I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to make sure that the spacing inside is okay. Because it looks like it's a little tight. No, that's okay. Maybe I need to make it a little wider. Easy widest. All right, so if I can center this guy, this guy, and this guy. So if I want these, did I not group these? Oh, you mother, mother of pearl. All right. I need to select all these dudes again, and then group them. And these guys, and these guys, and we're going to group all those guys together. And they're now all on the same level. On the same layer, rather. So here, here. Here and here, if we want to center align all those guys, cross your fingers. Oh man, we were pretty close. All right, so this adventure workers, we're just going to move over a little bit. Okay, so one is seems to be cleaner, you know. Um, one is definitely more uh, mine is definitely more like graphic but it's got that weird s so that might not be a seller uh janelle's is definitely cleaner i, w I wonder what would happen if i drew another s no jason make a new layer you dingy all right go up to 12. Is it, what's on 12. oh that's those guys okay i'm gonna name this 
so I don't accident since the type is in white, nothing's showing up in that little preview. So okay, so making a new layer, and then I am going to draw a new circle. Right. I'm going to adjust that. Come on. I'm going to adjust that to match what's going on over here. It's tough though, because that Gong Farmer's local force 615 is not, not quite circular. Alright, so this guy, this is outer circle. Now I start naming them, right? When we're almost done. <clears throat> and he's coming all the way to the bottom. So that the uh, the stroke doesn't cover up those handles on the shovel. I'm going to increase the stroke a little bit, but not as much as that inner. What the hell is going on there? Something's snapping weird. Let's go. We go to here, view, guides. No, I don't want to snap to anything. So take that off. Snap to glyph, whatever the hell that was. Glyph of warding. <clears throat> All right, now I think, just looking at this, I think that all of this can be bigger. Just to kind of break out of that circle a little bit, that inner circle. Right? If, but if you're going to break it like that, you need to make it look intentional. So, um, head down a little bit. You know, so uh, how like Kenosha County over here. dips over the top of that. So maybe I'll just uh, expand Wisconsin. So I think you got Superior up on the top there, up in uh, what Minocqua was up there or something. Purposely over the top of, breaking outside of that circle. You don't want what's called a tangent where like two objects kind of like wet handshake each other. You don't want that. You want lines to cross each other. So this right here needs to cross that. This right here needs to cross that. Um, Tangents are, are bad design, and you should feel bad for making them. All right, so this guy, uh, we're going to rotate him just a little bit. Okay, uh, this established 2024, can come down a tooch. And I feel bad, I should feel bad about this outer circle, because it's just not a circle. But, I don't know why I was snapping this stuff. Gong farmers will kick them up a little bit. I'm going to try to just outline that type and see if I can adjust that better that way. So I, I did um, com shift command O and basically took the type from being editable, where I can go in and, and retype things or change the font or whatever it was spacing, to being outlines. So I changed that Gong Farmer's Local 4615 to shapes now instead of type. So I can't, like, up here I can select that as type. You know, I can select this type and change it if I want to. Down here, I cannot. So that's what I did, but it helped me be able to adjust that shape just a tiny little bit, and I think that was nice. Okay, I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, with both of these. I just wonder now is if this see <laughs> you got to know when to stop. So let's see. I'm I'm going to change that stroke to the line on the outside of the circle, and then kick this up to just to give it more more meat maybe not as much maybe i'll take it back just a little see and now that i turn this one into uneditable type i want to make it bolder what i'm going to do is put a stroke on it and let's see how it worked yeah that's pretty good uh, maybe I'll kick this stroke back just to 0.75 instead of 1. But yeah, that's okay. And then this guy is editable. And I'll make him semi-bold as well. 
and just make sure that he's the same rich black. So yeah, I think it was a long, it was a long arduous process, and you can see why I wouldn't feel good uh, charging money for it. But because I'm doing it for free, I got to play around with it, and I I actually had fun doing it. And this is a, pretty close to what I had envisioned. So I'm going to save these as PDFs and kick them over to Mark. And you know, I'll, I'll save them in a couple different. I'll save them as PDFs and some uh, web some web quality ones. Like if he's going to get them silk screen somewhere, they'll want a vector file, which a PDF would be. Or if he just wants to put it on his website or whatever, he'll have a nice um, PNG that uh, that he can work with. But anyway, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. Check out this other video, handpicked by the YouTube algorithm, just for little old you. See you next time.